All right. So the reactive thing. So this is what you get. Uh, in this case, I have a, a rel system here running uh, rel 8.1. And uh, if I SSH into it, I get a little message that, well, this is here where you can access the web console on HTTPS and the address of the system and port 9090. And if I put this in the web browser, I get this, which then exposes all the things that are available to administer on the system. Let me do it. So, and yeah, this is the regular uh, operating system bits. You know, it uses systemd, it uses network manager, sshd, libvirt, all of this. Uh, and all of this is documented on, on this URL here. Um, and the QR code goes to the same URL. Um, and this actually allows you to, to, to grow as an admin because you can then do some tasks in the UI and other tasks in the CLI and you can sure it's like with the help of this documentation you can then see like oh but this this piece of the UI it uses these commands so then you can start to learn um, how to 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 grow as an admin and how to start automating things um, by, by just trying it out side by side type some stuff on the terminal it directly reflects in the UI uh, which then like, oh, this is how this commands work. This is the output of it. So, but uh, since we ship on different Linux distributions, I mean, we ship on Fedora, we ship on Debian, Ubuntu, Arch, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, all of these, like, they have slightly different things about them. They have different default package sets. Um, here on, on uh, Fedora, and I think this is still the case, it might not be still, but it still has Docker containers. You can't, it's like, there is no longer any Docker containers in RHEL. Um, so we, we quickly figured out that, okay, we actually need to make this system pluggable so that you can, you know, like all, all of the things here are, are done in different packages internally and then they, they populate the sidebar here. So for example, if we look at rel, we then have an extremely critical part that is the subscription speech. You wouldn't have this on Fedora, of course, but on rel, this is, you need to subscribe your system to connect your system to Red Hat so you can get the updates. Um, and, and this is not an add-on, it's something that we put in the, the, the base installation, of course. Um, so yeah, then we figured out, okay, we need, we need a, a, a pluggable system where you can add in, like, and have several packages that, that builds up the UI. Um, and this is also true for the things we're gonna talk about today because it then allows others to um, build their own UIs. Uh, let's see, yeah. So this is like, in our, our regular Git repository, these are the things that are in, in the, the, the cockpit Git repository. And these other things are things that are in external repositories. And a lot of these are not developed by our team. Like the subscription manager team is able to uh, build their own UI and they're able to maintain that because they have that uh, domain specific knowledge. Uh, and also, just the other day, I accidentally stumbled upon a very critical plugin that is like the Samba plugin. I had never seen this before. So things are like happening uh, outside of you know my immediate control and knowledge. Um, so, and another case which we're going to talk about a little bit today is how can you start building your own plugins? Because another piece of feedback we received a lot is that we have a lot of people out there that they, they want to build plugins specifically for their company, for their organization, um, which then allows, you know, they have a very specific need and they quickly need to get something together uh, to ease things, a very specific workflow for their customers. And this is what we're gonna show today, yeah. So, we will have no demo. 
demo for. But can you talk a little so bit about how how the whole thing is structured, maybe? Of course, of course. And maybe I can. This is a Windows computer. All okay, right. So um, right. So the idea was now that uh, I like live code a demo for you. It's not live coding, but you know, like showing how how that would work and how how it'd be easy. Um, and I wonder if I can uh, unplug this. Oh, I could have done this before. And copy it over so that at least I can show you in a text editor. But yeah, the idea is like all of this is, of course, can you go to a screenshot of it? <coughs> of this? You mean? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Mm. Um, so all, all the pages you see here on the left side, like um, like this is like the Chrome that, uh, that Cockroach puts around it, and everything inside here is one of those uh, packages or comes from one of those packages that uh, Andreas uh, just showed you. And these packages you can put anywhere, right? Like you can just write your own one and put it in dot local share cockpit, um, and then it, it gets that if you log in as that user. But you can also install them system wide, uh, of course. Um, and uh, let me copy those over and see if that works on Windows. If, uh, all we need is a text editor because it's all HTML and. You need WordPad probably because WordPad is not w working fine with align feeds. Okay, good to know. Yeah. You're a Windows professional. Let me see if I can bring go. this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, was that an insult? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say WordPad? Yeah, WordPad. Yeah, we're really winging this, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> it's improv. Well, if I had known, <laughs> right, then we could have connected here, but we're not going to make that in five minutes. So can you open the. Uh, Continue without scanning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How does this operating system work? So there's a dev control there. Yeah. Right, cool. Really like, uh, yep. I, I start from here. Okay, so, um, <coughs> like I said, it's all it's all um, HTML and JavaScript. Um, so like this is the most minimal plugin that you can make. You need the HTML file, which is you know like your, your basic UI. Uh, you need a JavaScript file, which you know adds some interactivity because we don't allow by default we don't allow uh, a JavaScript in the HTML just because we are very very much about locking as much down as possible so that you can can uh, like inject content and stuff. And then you need this little file, manifest.json. Which, if I can open this, where is WordPad? It's behind. Is this how Windows works, too? I nice! Yes. Look at this. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> cool. Can you all read this? No. No? OK. Uh, view, view, zoom uh, in. What? Oh, yeah. Uh, OK. Perfect. So this is just a little uh, manifest that uh, uh, tells Cockpit a little bit about your project, right? Uh, about that package. So we just say what version it is, which version of Cockpit it requires, because Cockpit has an API that you can uh, talk to, like all kinds of low-level Unix, uh, uh, you know, APIs like Dbus and, and files and uh, whatnot. <coughs> and also, you can say right where in the menu you want to put that in. The menu is the thing here on the left side. So in this case, if I could show this to you, um, <coughs> we would copy that uh, that folder over, and then we would see the the defconf label uh, over here. And then I would click on it, and then you, we, we would load that index HTML. Let me show that to you. Oh my god. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted. Thank you. Uh, you can open the HTML file in a browser and show the source code. Ooh. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for all your. Look at this. We crowdsourced the. Uh, is it Control U here as well? It is. Oh. Look at this. So, like I said, this is super simple. This is how we did HTML in the nineties. Um, <laughs> so, you know, just like a little bit of a uh, of a head where you you we load in the the cockpit JS. Oh, I should make this bigger now. Sorry about that. Okay, that doesn't work. How do you make? I don't think it, I make this bigger. Text size. Largest. Okay. okay. Um, <coughs> Um, so, so I load the index JS that you saw in, in my, my little plugin, and I also load the, the cockpit, uh, the cockpit base API, and then all I do is like have a little, you know, head, headline and, uh, and an input field and a, uh, a thing here. This is empty now because it's not running in cockpit. If this were running in cockpit, uh, then we would see the list of NFS exports uh, that I have because, and now comes the, the interesting bits. Do I open this in WordPad now? Can oh, this uh, is try one. Don't save. <laughs> Yay! Okay, that's. Zoom in, zoom in a little bit, yeah. <coughs> if I could now make the page. Okay, 
whatever. <laughs> so this is JavaScript in the word processing document. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, there is a, because we loaded Cockpit, right? There is a, uh, the, a Cockpit ob object, a big Cockpit object uh, that has access to all the APIs. And this is uh, opening this file as super user, because you know, I'm opening Etsy exports and we want to write it as well, so we need to be super user. Um, and then we, uh, we watch the file. So every time the file changes, and also once at the very beginning, it uh, calls this function that I pass here. Um, and then uh, that all it does is it uh, writes all of these things between here, right? Like everything that it reads. <laughs> this is so much cooler if I can show it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but imagine. But yeah, so cool. yeah, imagine. <laughs> so yeah, the idea, the idea being, right, that it's very reactive. So whenever, that's what uh, uh, Andreas was referring to before, whenever something on the system changes, we also want that to change on, uh, in cockpit. So whenever I uh, hit control W, <laughs> double, uh, colon W in, in VI or something, if I, if I write the file, then uh, this function triggers so that the UI is always updated in real time. And then uh, uh, we have this little button here with a uh, checkbox. I don't need to explain how this code works because we probably can all program. Um, but yeah, so you, you click the button and then we write the, the content of the file by appending that one, that one line to it. Um, and yeah, like I said, this is how we did it in the 90s, right? And I think you already saw uh, Andreas' oh, this, next this slide. Sneak, sneak slide. Um, because this is not how modern JavaScript development is done anymore. So um, let's see if I can go down. Do you go want to talk down. about that or shall I? No, I think it's better if you, I can talk about this ah, kind of stuff. Okay. Um, so on, on, uh, in the Cockpit project, uh, GitHub, uh, organization, we have something called the starter kit, which is a template for, uh, you know, a modern or how we use uh, modern web development uh, to make cockpit plugins, um, which uses Webpack, which uses, um, what's the other modern stuff? Uh, <coughs> but definitely like uses Webpack so they can use like all the JavaScript libraries from everywhere. Uh, mostly we use it for React because all, most of um, cockpit's development is done in, in React these days. But we also have a lot of other things in there that we uh, use to to make successful open source projects, right? We can make RPMs, we have release, release scripts in there, we have uh, hookups for with a very extensive corporate test suite, uh, which spins up VMs for you so that you can uh, actually like test that, um, and uh, translation helpers and, and stuff like this. Um, the idea is, I also had a demo for that, but yeah, well, I'm not gonna try and that. And it's a little bit of a, a pick and choose also. If you, for your project, has no need to build RPM packages, you can opt out of that. Right. And any other piece, or other critical piece in how we, we uh, are able to, to build the beautiful looking and well functional and accessible uh, widgets and, and, and interfaces is that we, we make use of pattern find, um, which is a, what do you call it, like a toolkit library more or less, and a set of um, design guidelines and uh, React uh, templates or what do you call it. Yeah. Um, Components. Yeah, components. Let's see, can I even, <laughs> I will. It's a link. Uh, uh, we have five minutes, maybe, but because we did want to open for questions. Yeah, so yeah, and here you can find all the documentation and it will allow you to then quickly um, build uh, amazing, uh, let's see, can I see the code here? I see, ah, never mind. But you can get access to like all the, the proper source code and this will then be able to guide you if you use these classes and, and all of that, uh, you're able to build uh, amazing uh, interfaces that are useful out of the box. Yes, so now we can open for questions after yeah. this little bit of a Kartavlova talk. Yeah, sorry about the demo. Cool, but do you have questions? That's why we only have five minutes and we, we actually wanted to open up for questions. Was the demo cool? Our demo was amazing. <laughs> amazing. It was fine. Now we can just say that as much, but <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it was very, it was very, good. very impressive. For also the short amount of time you put it together. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, definitely. We have a, a we're super helpful and friendly, I think, in uh, Hash Cockpit on IOC. Uh, but also, we have on the Cockpit Wiki uh, tons of feature pages about things that we would like to add at some point, and also things that you know could be developed further in uh, in existing pages that we have. Uh, 
why we don't do it on Oculus unless you have the like your own certificate. Yeah. Like Copy doesn't make any certificate for you. You need to uh, supply them. <coughs> yeah, you can make a self-signed one. Yeah, but you need to supply it. Like you, you don't. Yeah. I mean, it's not meant for localized, right? It's meant for a remote access in your server, and hopefully your server has a certificate on it. Yeah. Like the idea being that it's easier than SSH, right? Like you SSH in somewhere and you like do stuff in the terminal. This is a, like a little bit more modern because mm. you know we have the full fidelity of, uh, of web pages and you can do so much more. It's reactive. You see much more on the on the same page. Um, you know, it's colors. It's different sized fonts. You know, like <laughs> things you can do since a long time now. Yeah, and I would say at the same time, like for for a lot of people who are unfamiliar with Linux, I mean, like yeah. we all know and love our, our terminals, but for a lot of people who like start dipping their toes in Linux system administration, like the terminal is a bit scary. It's just <laughs> a big black Are we good? hole there, right? So, okay. yeah. Um, just have one last question: Is there any link on GitHub where we can see the demo? Uh, we could make a, a video. There's tons of videos already on the Copy Channel right? that do stuff like this. But we could also, yeah, I can uh, record it and. Upload it. There is a copy channel on YouTube that has this. Mm. There is, right? I think there is. I think there might be, yeah. There might we be, can there might be a copy channel on YouTube. <laughs> not copy demo. Yeah. There is, huh? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.